and I have been using soft pastel for a little over six years now and I, um, I teach online classes and I've been really excited to try to connect with the community in a different way so I thought live streaming would be a lot of fun. Um, I'm hoping to basically be working on projects and showing and talking about what I do along the way. I'm definitely open to answering any questions. I love talking about uh, pastel and my love for this beautiful medium. And what I've been doing lately is I've been, uh, I decided just to play around and make a, um, just a nose. <laughs> I thought, why not start easy? And so that is what I'm gonna be playing around with today. I, if you haven't heard before, I use um, pan pastels and these are real um, high pigmented um, soft pastel. They're a lot like a makeup cake pan and you're basically, it's just a really um, high pigment that doesn't have a lot of fillers. So a little bit about pan pastel is it is the brand name that is um, there's really nothing else out there like this this um, the pan pastels come in families so right here on the palette you can see that i have this family is the burnt sienna and with the family um, it comes with a tint a core a shade and an extra dark. And so when I'm working with these, I don't usually always use the whole family. Um, but what's really cool about this product and this system is you can get away with buying just the, um, the, the core. So the burnt sienna is, uh, I could buy this and then I can just add the um, white to get a tint and I can add black to get a shade and then I can add more black to get an extra dark. But when you start using this after a while, you realize you don't want to mix everything. And so I, I do have the whole set. Um, I'm really excited about, you know, it's really nice that they, they don't, they last a long time. So I really love that. I've only, I've replaced quite a bit, but that's because I'm painting a lot. But what I'm using here is this Wolf's Carbon Pencil. And um, I use this as part of my creative process. I love working on this dark sanded paper. Sanded paper is a whole nother ball game. It is the core of my process. I think it allows me, I believe it allows me to do what I can do with the medium because I do use this sanded paper. The, the other thing that's really cool about it is it takes a lot of layers. And so for say, I'm just, um, I have this little, I have a little reference here that I'm playing around with today. I, I don't go exactly by references, but they're really nice sometimes. And so I have this nose that I'm just playing with. And um, let's see how that, if that looks right. Okay. And so I'm just using that as a guide to, to sketch out um, my nose here. And I, I'm not expecting it to be exactly the same, but um, I, I use this to, to sketch directly on the paper or I can also transfer my image. I wanna see if that's bright enough, I'm hoping. Yeah, it looks pretty bright enough. And what this does is it has extra staying power. I like that because it's the way I work. I work with the dark paper quite frequently and so I'm just um, sketching it on there. And then it's pretty amazing because you can erase just like how you would if, if you wanted to make any type of changes. Uh, uh, I can just use an eraser. And I just use these white erasers, which I love. So if I wanted to change this, I can just erase it right off and with other papers that can be a little bit challenging to do so I can make these types of changes anytime throughout my process I always feel like I I want to make you know I want to practice more noses and stuff because I I find that those are something I could work on more 
and I'm always growing, I'm always learning. And so I feel like you can never practice enough. And it takes a little bit of time to get used to working on this on the surface. I was looking for my stick. I have a, um, a support stick and I'm realizing I have misplaced that, but it's not something I have to have. Let's see here. I don't know where it could go, but hey. Well, I do use a stick to balance on too, and you can use anything like I have this paintbrush right here and I can just use this also. All right, so I've sketched up a little bit of how I want this nose to go. And once I do that, I usually start by putting my darks in and um, I'm going to just use this soft tool. Now, the soft tools are pretty amazing. They are these high density foam tools that are made specifically for pan pastel. And you know, a lot of people will be like, well, I'll just go to the dollar store and get some eyeshadow um, applicators because there is one that looks a lot like that. And, um, but I find the wands are what I use the most. And even if I use the eyeshadow um, from like an applicator from the dollar store, it just doesn't have that same density and detail. So after years of using the medium, I've learned that these are really worth the investment um, a lot of it, you're learning how to get the right pressure on the paper. So this is a 600 grade and this UART paper comes in many different grades. And I um, found that the 600 really works well for me. And so I've worked with that and it also works well with my um, soft tools. I also use like a... Um, microfiber towel and that's what I use to take off my pastel and the reason why I use microfiber towels is because it really grips onto the waste it's not fluffing around pan pastel is very um, it it doesn't shed as much you're not having a lot of dust and issues and things like that it will shed down but i will just empty it out later i have a little tray down on my easel but these um, rags what i do is, is i have some just designated for uh, pan pastel and then what i'll do is i'll just throw them all into the wash and they just get washed together so i have that down here clipped onto my easel and that's what i use to to figure out well how much pastel do i want on on the paper so I've got my darks in here a little bit. I'm gonna go with some burnt sienna just to lay down and block in some color. And you can see I can even mix directly on to the um, board right here. I use these panel boards, but a lot of times I'm doing most of my mixing just right on to the paper. Well, I see there's a few people out there. I'm so glad that you're here watching and feel free if you have any questions about the medium, about what I'm doing, totally um, reach out and ask. I would love to answer any questions. I, I know um, people have been taking my classes and I just thought this would be a great way to even answer questions through this type of interaction and you know I'm I'm not making this all where it's a full tutorial I, I thought it would be really fun to be able to just see how I work and um, be able to connect that way so I'm just putting in and blocking in some colors now some of the the one of the things that I found is really magical about skin tones and things like that is I find beginners will use just the same color in their different values. And that can really make this look muted. I'm a rainbow artist. I love painting in rainbow. So even though I'm using a, a reference image to guide me, I will rainbow it out. That's just how I go. And I um, 
we'll just get down some basics here and then I will start putting in some other colors. So now I'm gonna be putting in some of the orange. This is an orange shade. Um, the ex the um, extra dark is a little bit darker, but the orange shade I really love. The orange is almost a little too bright. So I, can, I find that um, I'm always toning it down. And so I really love the orange shade. So I'm going to tap in a little bit of that. A lot of this is about layering. I would say that some of the, the hardest challenge that the students have is, is layering with the medium. They, they, they think they're done and um, it's just, you got to add more layers. So I'm just trying to get the block in of I mean, everything looks a little wonky at the beginning and that's okay. Just have to trust. Just putting in a little bit of black to guide that right there. I'll bring in a little bit of that pink. That's the magenta core. This is the, actually this is the magenta shade, I think. No, this is the magenta core. I do love this one in its purity. And this is the Magenta Extra Dark, one of my favorite colors. And I also incorporate color, um, not colored pencils, but pastel pencils into my um, work. I really love putting those on the next layers. So I'm using the Yellow Oxide. They've changed this name, it was Yellow Ochre and now it's yellow oxide so that has been a little bit of a twist lately is trying to figure out what that was and then you get to see how wonky some stuff can be at the beginning stages i am not one of those who just it miraculously comes out perfect. I, I'm a build up type of artist. It takes a little bit of time and then I get my groove. I will say this is one of my favorite tools is the oval. Um, I think when you start using the tools, you get where you start discovering which ones are your favorites. And I've really enjoyed this one. I'm gonna pop in a little bit of the yellow oxide, and this is the yellow oxide tint to give a little bit of dimension here. I always like to, the noses have that little angle right here and I'm just slowly building that up. On the dark paper, it's like you're bringing it out, and I find that pretty magical. So I'm like, I, I'm addicted to the black paper. I use it for most of my work. 
I would say for figurative work, when you're doing faces and everything, there is a time when I'm kind of like, well, I want it to have a little bit more brightness. So I will work on a, um, an ivory paper. But the thing with working about the ivory is you have to put all your darks in. Um, this one I'm pulling things out and I find it really satisfying to be able to uh, pull things from the dark into the light. And uh, I'm just using a little bit of the burnt sienna tint here and some burnt sienna and playing that around with the, with the orange shade. And I'm just bringing it up slowly. I'm just wiping off onto my microfiber. See, the cool thing is, is I did use that Wolf carbon pencil and you can bury all these lines. You don't have to keep them there but I'm working with the darks. I'm not working against them. I, I will put darks in first because I know that these colors over here are a lot lighter than I would normally want to work with. So I want to push them back even darker. So I'll pick up the darks from that. And it's just really malleable. So like if I didn't like something, I basically could just be like, well, I'm just going to erase that. And you can't do that on all the papers. Like, that's what I love. And what's neat too is you can take and um, put patterns in with erasers. And I'll even, I don't brush, you know, on right here, but if that eraser's in there, I'll just brush that down. And then you can watch and see how quick it is to take and, and put that back. It's so versatile. Like, I think that's the thing I love the most. Okay. I'm using some of that burnt sienna. That's pretty bright there. I can tone that down a little bit. Pop in a little bit of the magenta extra dark. I think I want to bring down You can see how I'm using that black and I can go back and forth. Okay. So I have a pretty good base down here for the nose. I'm really happy with that. And then I can take in the, start playing around with the pencils. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this burnt sienna shade in and then take the yellow oxide or yellow ochre, put that a little bit up here. I want this to be a little bit more shady on this side, but I think I'll just, Put the magenta in there too. I like to rainbow things out. That's who I am. So I'm putting that highlight in. And then I'm thinking about the highlight on the nose a little bit. Um, this uh, burnt sienna core color, if you're looking, those noses, they will have a little bit of the shadow on this side. And then there's a little bit of that light hitting right here and that will blend into the color underneath so it's just this slow little magical journey that I love to go on um, and in the thing about this medium too is it, it doesn't make you afraid to try new things because you can easily just erase it or push it back or Okay. So 
So to mix a, a peachier color, I can use the red or this magenta with the yellow ochre. I'm just going to call, I call it yellow ochre. I'm so used to it, but it's called yellow oxide now. And then you can get this peachier color. And that's the one thing is it doesn't really come into the um, kit. So you have to learn how to mix this peach and you can make it a little bit more red or you can put it in and, and make it a little cooler with the magenta. So I love bringing that peach color in. Looks like I have a little mustache, but this is just for fun. I need to play more. Okay. So I'm going to show you here that I can basically just say I didn't want that on anymore. It bothered me. I can erase that. Blend it out with a little bit. Just really forgiving. Okay. All right. So I have the basic nose shape down. Here is when I, I love starting to work with the um, pastel pencils. The ones I love the most uh, when I started out were the Carbothello the, by Stabilo. They are a great core uh, pastel and they're a little brighter because um, they're just on the little bit brighter side than all of the other systems. I do have some of the other ones that I really love. I love the, the Pit um, pastel. They, they have a little bit more earthier tones. And then I would say I have a few of the Dur, um, the Dur Went. And I was really after purples because they're really hard to find good purples in pastel. So I bought anything I could anywhere. And I find that uh, I have some of the Derwents too. I have most of the main set. And I also bought the um, Karen Dash. They are a lot softer and they sit higher up on the paper. So as you see, I didn't really put my pastel pencils down first because the pan pastel goes into the, um, into the grain of the uh, paper. And now I can go on another layer and play with adding mark making and more detail work with the pastel pencils. And I'm not out to be perfect. I would say that's the biggest thing with my process is I don't want to be perfect. I, I have enough of that challenge in my life and there's got to be other one, people out there that, that uh, struggle with that too. I'm out to break things down and build structure and then add, um, add messiness in and make it not perfect and that's been my goal and my journey so here i'm just going to add a little bit this is really in the yellow ochre family you can see it's really close i'm just adding a little bit of highlight in here and the cool thing is is, is once you get them in here you start learning how they work with each other and i have let's see i think this one's a little bit darker this is a in the pit pencil family See, once you have the struggle uh, the structure down you can break things up and work with it and a lot of it then starts leaning on value and tone and so I will just start going back and forth and, and playing with that this is an extra dark uh, pastel pencil it's the diet diazonine purple. I can't ever pronounce that very well, but it really um, pushes things back a lot darker. So I'll play with that and get this nose section in here a little bit darker. And then I think I'm going to use, this is in the um, burnt sienna family. So I love it and I can kind of put value back in here. I want this to go down a little bit more. And the thing is, it's, it's all about layering. So I can go and take this 
purple and just go right back over if I went too much. Let's see, it's a give and take. I'm a little bit of a dancer when it comes to uh, creating with pastel, but I think that's what I love about it because it's a dry medium. You don't have to be as fussy and um, you're constantly, you can show up anytime you want. I think I love that about it. And um, it's always ready to go. So I love this warm tone that I'm bringing in here with the cools. It makes it look like it's glowing. I can put a little bit of a highlight because it's a, a brighter value. And then I really love this. Um, it's like a Mars purple or whatever. I It's a 642. It's Carbothello, but it's one of my favorites. And then if there's... I can still use this this uh, dark purple, the diazonine purple, to instead of black even, to create and push back some of the ones that maybe they came over for the shadow that's a little bit too much. And I love to add a little pop of color. This is a, a Karen Dash. And they like to be used when the tooth's filled up a little bit more. I mean, there's no rules here. I end up stacking these all in my hand, but I do have a little tray down here. Um, adding a little bit more highlight in here. And you can knock those down if they're too much. I can even go back with my wand. I'll wipe it off first. And then I can just knock back. The pastel will literally, for a pencil, it'll drop off real quick. So you have to be careful what you're going to touch. I can still put colors over the pan pastel. It's just, it will, it will um, destroy pretty much any of the line work I've made underneath. And that's okay, because sometimes I'm pushing back because I don't want it to be so structured. So let's see here. I got a little bit of this skin flesh tone pencil here. Oh, thank you, Cameron. <laughs> I appreciate my first chatter. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That's my husband. He has been a trooper of a support on this journey, on my whole journey. I, I tell you, I, I don't know what I would do without you. So he is here helping me. I'm going to use this really um, kind of a wine color. It's still in the warmer cool of the purples. And I'm going to bring that over here and tone down some of this on this side. I think it would be There we go. Now, the one question I get too is from, from students is they ask a lot about when I take it off the easel, it can look a lot darker. And, and that is true at times. And that's why with the dark paper, we really have to learn how to build up our layers. And it can make a big difference because if you don't build up your layers and have enough contrast, it can really um, look darker when you take it off the easel. So I'm just trying to bring up the value around the nose so I can have a little bit of a smoother transition.
mixing in some color here, seeing what, if I like that. So now that I've put the pastel pencils, it, if I do touch any of that on that spot, it will go down. So I'm going to play around here with my yellow ochre, not yellow ochre, my burnt sienna pencil. else I want to put in there. I'll play with this one. So down in the nostril area, I like to soften that transition and I'll put some more black in here in just a moment. Oh, hi Ellen, welcome. I'm really excited to be here. This is a test day and I am getting ready. I will be streaming live on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I'm testing it all out because getting this set up is a journey. Okay. So I'm just getting those. I always have to go back and play with the nostrils to get them just the right way. And sometimes I feel like I overly work on them, but oh well. That's not bad. So I'm going to be finishing up here in the next few minutes. So if you have any questions or anything like that, this would be a great time to ask because I'm not going to be on as long today because I just really wanted to make sure this would work because I'm going to announce it in to all my subscribers and my newsletter and I didn't want them all to show up and not have it working because I tried this yesterday and it was a fail. My computer was just not having it. So, um, if you have any questions, what time on Tuesday and Thursday? Thank you, Cameron. It'll be 1.30 Pacific Standard Time to 3.30. But um, if you miss the stream, these will all be archived. So you can always come back and watch them. And if you want to learn more, I have a new, brand new free pan pastel. Well, it's all my um, soft pastel lesson membership area on my website. So if you go there, you can sign up for free. You don't have to enter any um, payment information to access the um, free member library. And you will get multiple free classes. And then I also, when you become a member, you'll get coupons to my full length classes if you're interested in learning more. But I really want to have you know, to show my passion for this medium and share it with others and make their journey a little bit easier because there's definitely not a lot of information out there. So I um, hope it will be fun to connect here on live stream. So thank you so much, Ellen, for coming and chatting today. You're, you're my first chatter that's not my family. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel like the, the nose is pretty good where we're at right now. So um, I hope you will come next week. If you sign up for my newsletter, you'll be uh, notified. So that's the same with the free membership area. And you, um, if you sign up for that, uh, you will be notified when I go live too. And there'll be a notification when I set up the events on YouTube. So um I love your pan, your pastel painting style. Will you be teaching more faces in this style? Yeah, I've been requested to do um, more faces. I, I have a few pieces in the works right now, working with faces because faces is a whole nother ball game to teach. And I'm really excited to, um, to, to do a class on that. My next class I'm doing is 
getting close to being revealed. It's not figurative, but I think people are gonna enjoy it. At least I hope they will. So I'm working on that right now. But after that class, I will be working on doing a figurative type style and try to make it where it incorporates some of my style because I always um, offer my line art to practice with and to follow along. And um, so yes, Ellen, I will definitely be doing that after my next class. I really hope to um, start working on that. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, I think I'm gonna call this good for today. And um, you know, I'm gonna put actually really quick, I'm gonna put, I see something a little highlight down here. It's the little things. And then I'm gonna, sometimes I, we'll just keep touching stuff and where's my, I'm looking for my dark purple. Here we go. And see if I go over something, I can just push it back with that dark. And then I go, oh, maybe I did that a little too much. I love putting a little highlight in there. Loosen that up a little bit. All right. So this is just a test time. So I'm going to let that go and call this good. Thank you so much for coming. I'm really excited about this new journey. Um, my next live, I'm going to be painting um, one of my bird uh, pieces. I'll even get it real quick and show it to you. I have it right here. I'm going to be doing uh, this, this bird right here and with the mushrooms. And I'm going to be doing it in this style that I've done before. So I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm going to be starting that on... Um, on Tuesday at 1.30. Uh, if everything goes right and there's no uh, tech problems, <laughs> that is where I'll be. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much for joining me and um, I wish you the best. And thanks again, Ellen. It was really nice to have you here. And thanks for your spark, Cameron. All right, take care.